What's going on guys? Today I'm here to show you all four must-know Adobe Premiere Pro transitions that you can do all in program with no external plugins needed. So here we are on Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm going to be using CC 2017 for this tutorial right here. I have my clips lined up and I labeled them different colors just to signify that they are different clips. If I scrub over, you can see uh, these are two different uh, clips. I'm sorry. Um, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to scrub to where these two clips meet. And for this effect, we're going to cut off five frames on each of the clips. So if we scrub to where the clips meet, holding the shift key and push right arrow, it's going to take us over five frames. We'll cut right there. And if we hold shift and push left on the arrow key, it's going to take us back five frames to where the two clips meet. And then we'll hold on shift and push that left arrow key again. It's going to take us five frames into the first clip. So we have our cuts and we're just going to add effects to these two cuts. We're not going to add them to the entire clip. So first effect that we're going to drop on is echo and we're going to drop echo onto the first clip. These settings right here are correct for the most part. We're just going to up the number of effects. Uh, echoes, I'm sorry, just to give us more of like a, you know, more of like a motion blur right there, as you can see. And we're already halfway done with this effect, this transition. The next effect that we're going to add to that first clip is we're going to search for HLS and we're going to drop on the color balance HLS. Cool. We got that on. If we scrub to uh, the first frame of this cut, we're going to go down. And we're gonna click this clock right here next to hue. This is gonna add in a keyframe. We're gonna scrub to the last frame of that cut where the two clips meet. Click back on this. And we're gonna add in another point, which is another keyframe. And on this keyframe, we're gonna up this number way up to around a 300. And this is gonna give us the color changing effect in the transition. So if we play that back, as you can see right there, the colors are changing. And we're also getting an echo in there. And we just got to add these two effects to this next clip. So uh, the good thing about Echo is it's able for us to just copy and paste over to the next clip. So if we click on it, we can just go to, we can just go up to edit, copy, we can click on this clip, go up to edit, and we can just paste that. And as you can see, we have our Echo on there, but we just have to add the color balance HLS. So we're going to drop this on. And we're going to add in keyframes for this one as well. We're going to scrub to the first frame where these two clips meet. Click on this, scroll down, and we're going to drop in a keyframe for our hue. Scrub to the last frame of that, click back on it, and we'll add in another keyframe. The difference between the first initial clip that we added the HLS color balance to in this one is we're going to reverse the amount. So in the first one, we added uh, we added the different amount to the last keyframe, but on this one, we're going to add the different amounts to the first keyframe. So if we push this arrow right here, it's going to take us to the first keyframe we added to this clip. And we're just going to boost this number right here up to 300. And what this is going to do is it's, it, it's going to already start into uh, the color changing and it's going to transfer from this. So as you can see, this clip starts and it has no color change and the color is going to change throughout it. And this one's going to already start changing the color and it's going to go back to normal, which is going to give it a good transition back into the original clip. So let's just play this back. As you can see, it's pretty cool right there. And another thing that you can do with this is if you wanted to add in keyframes for the lightness on the HLS color balance, you can do that as well. So if we wanted to scrub to the first frame right here and add in a keyframe for the lightness, uh, let's just scrub to around the middle of the clip. We'll add in another keyframe and then we'll scrub to the last frame. Click back on this and we'll add in another keyframe for lightness. If we push this arrow right here, it's going to take us to the middle keyframe. We could just up this if we wanted a bigger flash, depending on what type of uh, scene you're doing. I don't like when it's too high. As you can see, it's a little bit too white. So I try to stick to like around the 40 area. And if we play this back, it's going to give us like a crazy flash in between. And that transition just looks dope. So that is the HLS. I don't even know what I'm calling this. That's the HLS flare right there. Next effect that we're going to get into is the double screen. So with this effect, this transition, we're only going to have to add effects to the first initial clip. So uh, right here, we have the two clips. And this particular transition is around the six frames. 
So if we scrub two of the two clips of meat, we're just gonna push the left arrow key over six frames. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're just gonna give this clip a little cut, little cut right there. And we're gonna wanna duplicate this clip up and put it on top of uh, itself. So if we hold on the option key on Mac, we can just drag this up and we'll have a duplication. And we're gonna adjust the speed of this clip. We're gonna wanna adjust the speed of it. So if we click on it, we go up to the clip drop down menu, go to speed duration. We're gonna up this to around three, 300%. It's gonna make it shorter. We're just gonna drag it right back over. So we have that. We're gonna wanna change the blending mode to this to lighten. And we're gonna wanna drop on a brightness and contrast effect right there. And we're gonna we're gonna go in and we're gonna add in a few keyframes for this. So we'll scrub to the first frame of this cut. We'll drop this. We'll hit this button. Add in another keyframe. We're gonna go over two frames and add in another keyframe. So if we push right on the arrow key twice, one two, we can push this button right here to add in another keyframe. We're gonna go over another two frames and then add in another keyframe, one two, and then we'll go over another two frames and add in another keyframe, one two. And we might have to click back on the clip to get it to highlight. Click back on it. Just add in that keyframe. If we push it left right here on this, it's going to take us to the previous keyframe we added. And we're going to want to go to the second keyframe, not the first one. So uh, to get to the second one, you push this arrow. And we're just going to boost the brightness up. And we're going to do that for every other. So we're not going to do it for this one. We'll push the arrow. And then we'll push the arrow again. Click back on this to get it to highlight. And we'll up the brightness. And this is going to give us like a double flash effect. So let's just play this back. As you can see, you get the double flashes in there, one flash, and we have like an echo effect almost because we have the speed and we change the blending mode. And that's the double screen right there. Next transition is the trippy fade. Now this could look pretty cool depending on what type of video you're putting it in. Um, but this is a fairly long transition. It's not something that's fast and it's not gonna really deter your eye away from the actual visual. So um, this transition is gonna be around 25 frames or so. so uh, we're going to scrub to where these two clips meet again, and we're just going to go over 25. So if we hold shift and we push right on the arrow key, it's going to take us over five. So we'll do that five times. We already did it once, twice, three times, four times, five times. Um, and this is cut right there. So we'll do that. So we'll go back to where the two clips meet and we'll do the exact same thing for the uh, previous clip. So we'll hold shift and then we'll push left arrow key five times. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll give it a cut right there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to call you back, bro. All right, so we have our cuts and our clips. The first effect that we are gonna add to this is wave warp. So if we search wave warp, We'll be able to drop that right there on our first clip and we're just going to play around with these settings we're going to leave this on sign i'm not even sure what that said sign sign whatever um and the first thing that we're going to do is we have to pin these edges as you can see right here on the bottom and on the top uh, the edges tend to come up so we're going to have to change that to all edges just to make sure our edges are good all right, so we did that. We'll have to up our wave height. I like to go like around a 140 or so. But as I said, you can go through and adjust this and try whatever works best for you. I'll up the wave width to around 600 or so. I like it to be fairly big. I want this to look very trippy. So maybe like a 650 or so, 660-ish. And I'm gonna up the speed to around a two. Uh, maybe like a 2.3 or so. We play this back as you can see it's waving it's like a weird wave effect um but if we're gonna want to add another effect to this so if we search and we do inverts um we're gonna want to drop invert on and we're gonna have to add in some keyframes for the invert because we don't want it to go instantly to the actual uh you know the actual inverted it just looks too crazy when it just goes straight to white so we're gonna have to add in some keyframes to get that smooth transition from normal and to invert it but before we do that we're we're going to change that because i don't personally like the actual look of the inverted so i like to use hue it just it just changes the colors makes it look trippy you know um so if we go down we scrub to the first frame of this clip we're going to add in a keyframe to blend this with the original we'll scrub to the last keyframe before the clips meet last frame i mean 
and we'll add in another keyframe. If you push this left arrow, it's gonna take us back to the first keyframe we added. And we're gonna boost this all the way up to 100. So we have that gradual transition between it being normal and then going into the trippy colors. So as you can see right there, it goes and it's, it's gradual, but as you can see, it, it kind of sort of jumps right there between those two clips. So what I like to do is I'll add in an additive dissolve between these two, just so it's a smoother transition. It doesn't jump, as you can see goes into that and we're going to add these exact same effects to uh, the next clip as well so we'll go in and we can actually just copy the wave warp over we copy it um, command C command V copy and paste over to this clip we'll get the wave warp over and with the invert we're going to have to add in those keyframes again so we'll just search that and add it on go down we're gonna change this to hue just like we did at first and we'll scrub to where these clips meet we'll add in a keyframe right here at the beginning and then we'll scrub to the end and we'll add in a keyframe at the end as well add in a keyframe right there and push the right arrow key to go to the last keyframe we added in we're gonna up this way up to 100 so it gradually transitions back to the normal color and we're gonna add in an additive dissolve between those two clips, just like we did on the first one, so we don't get that jump from it being wavy to being normal. So we'll go to video transitions, add in an additive dissolve. And if we play this back, we can look at the transition. This is kind of abrupt right here as well. So we can, we can drop in an additive dissolve right here as well. So let's just check this. As you can see, everything is smooth. And this could be a very cool effect to add to a trippy video that you just want to, you know, give off that different color discoloration, you know, vibe. The last transition effect that we're going to get into is the mass displacements. And we're just going to do the exact same thing that we did before. We'll scrub to where the clips meet. This transition right here is going to be around a five frame transition. So uh, we're going to only be adding effects to the first clip. So we'll scrub to where the clips meet, as I said. We're just gonna jump back five frames. So if we hold on the shift key, push left on the arrow, it's gonna take us back five frames. We'll cut this. And we're gonna duplicate this clip up just like we did in the double screen effect. So if we click on it, hold the option key, drag it up, it's gonna duplicate it for us. And if we click on this clip, we go to our effects control right here. We're gonna click on this little square and the square is gonna add in a mass for us. So Let's just drop this mass feather down to a zero. And we're gonna create a shape. You can create whatever shape you want. I typically do rectangles. Um, uh, let me just zoom this out to around the 25% so we can see the actual edges of the frame. And as I said, we're gonna make whatever shape you want. You can do rectangles, you can do them vertical, you can do them horizontal, you can make a triangle if you want. It really doesn't matter. As I said, I'm gonna make a rectangle. We're just gonna drag this out. Whatever you make, drag it beyond the edges of the actual clip. And now we have a mask. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna up the scale of it. And as you see, when we up the scale, it's gonna give us this weird, almost crazy transition uh, effect where, um, you know, whatever portion of the shape that you make is gonna be bigger. So you have the option to up the scale. You can rotate it if you want. You can really do whatever you wanna do with this. So let's just rotate it a little bit just to you know, do a little bit something that's different. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this around every two frames. So if we push right on the arrow key and go over two frames, one, two, we're gonna cut this clip right here. And if we click on the second clip, the clip, the portion that we just cut, we're gonna go back to our effects control panel right here. And if we click on mass one, if you hover over, you have the option to move it. So. We're just gonna move it to somewhere else on the screen. I'm gonna move it up to a little bit higher on his head and you, you wanna do something different. So you might wanna scale it up or scale it back down, whatever, you just wanna do something different. Uh, so this makes the effect you know, go all over the place and you know, take people's eyes off the actual edit. So I'm gonna scale up a little bit and if we go over two more frames, one, two, we're gonna give it another cut and we're gonna click on this uh, portion that we just cut, click on it, click back on our mask 
and we're just gonna move it down a little bit maybe to the bottom of the screen to you know make it a little bit different you can also make a different shape if you wanted to I'm not gonna do that though I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller and if we play this back as you can see it just cuts it puts it in different places takes people's eyes off of what's going on it makes that transition a bit cool so those are my four must know transitions that you can do all in Adobe Premiere Pro with no external plugins necessary if you enjoyed this video make sure to drop me a like comment also subscribe to the channel if you're new here peace out guys